Hi, welcome to the Air Hug Community Podcast. This is episode 15. You're listening to the Air Hug Community Podcast. I'm your host, Judy Arizoza. And on this podcast, I bring you conversations and stories from guests and myself that inspire us to thrive on a higher level. We talk about things like relationships and habits for optimal health and how we see the world. Whether you are a mother or an other, the Air Hug community is here to help you realize that improving the lives of others will boomerang back to you exponentially. And remember, not to be too serious. Life is better with a daily dose of smiles and air hugs. How many decisions do you think that you make in an average day? I think the number will probably shock you. Are you ready for this? Do you think it's maybe 200 or 500? or a thousand? Actually, the average number of decisions that we make in any given 24 hour period is 3,500. So it's no wonder that in the field of social psychology, there's a relatively recent topic of study and it's decision fatigue. So decision fatigue is really interesting because on the one hand, it can be mistaken for a lack of willpower. On the other hand, it can just be mistaken for um, inability to make choices or someone who you might think of this person as someone who always makes poor choices. But in fact, they may just be suffering from decision fatigue. So what is decision fatigue? It is the deteriorating quality of a decision after making numerous decisions. So it's, it's pretty obvious, right? So you just, as you go along in your day, there are so many decisions to make. And former President Bush used to say, George Bush used to say that uh, decision-making was an occupational hazard <laughs> for him. So I found that pretty interesting. Talk about having to make decisions, right? I mean, he made decisions, the president, he or she, um, someday, makes decisions that impact the world on a daily, sometimes on a moment-by-moment basis. So there's a paradox here if you think about it. So there's people who have situations where they actually lack choices, right? If you're in first grade, you have to go to school whether you want to or not, you know, assuming school is in session, right? You have to do certain things whether you want to or not. And as adults too, you know, some days we have to go to work whether we want to or not. But yet, having the uh, option to make a lot of choices can actually be psychologically aversive. So, you know, if you can, it can almost be mentally paralyzing in a way. You know, I've You can all think of times in your life where you've had like just too many choices. Like, for instance, go to an Italian restaurant this isn't even in my notes, but this sometimes overwhelms me. Some Italian restaurants, you know, which is a something I like to do, is eat Italian food, but they have so many choices on the menu that it's like, oh my gosh, if I get this, then I can't get that. What if I, but oh, look over there, they have meatballs, but oh my God, they have arancini. Oh, but wait, they have calamari. It, it can be crazy, right? You want it all, but obviously you can't eat it all. So it just, it can be actually really stressful, even though it's supposed to be a fun night out of dinner, right? So let's go back to thinking about people with high-level positions. So I'm going to think about, I want you to think about Barack Obama and Steve Jobs. Both of them had a little strategy, and it was a clothing strategy, so that was something they had did not have to make decisions on. They, Barack Obama, only chose between two suits, black and blue. That's it. Black and blue, black and blue. Steve Jobs always wore a turtleneck, and I believe it was a black turtleneck and jeans. That's it. Um, So did Elizabeth Holmes, by the way, if you know who she is. Um, Things didn't quite turn out that well for her, but she did have the decision thing uh, all set with clothing. 
but uh, I don't know if you know who she is. <laughs> um, look her up. You can, you'll see. Okay, so how about healthcare professionals? Okay, doctors, nurses, physicians assistants, respiratory therapists, they um, originally scrubs in white lab coats were put into, you know, made as so-called uniforms because they would show dirt, right? The light colors. And so people would wear the light colors in the hospital to show that their outfit was clean. And if it wasn't, they would have to go and change. But, you know, an unexpected benefit of this is they didn't have to think about what to wear to work every day. They pop on the scrubs and maybe they wear a lab coat over it. Don't forget your stethoscope and off they go. You know, in in the old days when nurses wore uniforms with caps, it was the same thing. They even had to wear white stockings, by the way. But those are just some examples of how minimizing decisions early in the day can actually help with progress and decision making later in the day. So you may want to actually think about that. Maybe you want to make your wardrobe something very simple. I personally, although I wear lots of different colors and such, I don't wear the same leggings and top every day, but I wear leggings every day and because I can. It's, you know, I've cut out my work to allow that to happen. And I either, you know, if it's warm out, I wear a tank top. Otherwise, if it's cold out, I wear a long sleeve top. If I need to, I pop on a vest or a sweatshirt, done, boom. Unless it's date night, that's how you're going to find me. So unless I have to go to something official. So, and even then I try to get away with leggings with boots and heels or heels. (laughs) Okay, so where was I? Oh, I want to talk about grocery stores because grocery store uh, managers, owners, and people in charge generally at grocery stores figured this out a very long time ago, okay? And they figured this out when they put a candy aisle at the checkout, right? So just think about this. I'm going to give you two situations to think about. One is, um, and I'll go back to my college days. When I was a college student, you know, money was tight. And so I was in a financial situation, right? But I had to buy groceries and I only had so much money in my checking account, okay? And it had to last me the week and groceries had to be part of it. So I would go through the store and I would have to make a trade-offs all the time of this or that, you know, this or that, this or that. And it would be very frustrating, you know, I'm like, you know, how can I eat for like, you know, $27 or whatever it was. One time I remember my grocery bill was $9 and I agonized over it. But anyways, that was a very long time ago. So you know, you're going through and having to make all those trade-offs as you go. Think about people on diets and people on chronic diets or chronically trying to eat a certain way. As they go through the grocery store, they are making loads of decisions. They're looking at labels. They're picking things up. They're putting them down. Things are going in their cart. They're coming out of their cart. Excuse me. Things are going in their cart and out of their cart because they're thinking and overthinking and rethinking, is this good for me or is this bad for me? And that's a whole other topic, which we can get to another time. But in each of these situations, the starving college student or someone who is in a financial situation or someone who is on a trying to live according to a certain diet, go through that store. You might be in the store for an hour, you know, and then They get to the checkout counter and they are mentally fatigued. And I've been there and it's like, oh, I just want to get out of the store. Oh, wait, there's a Hershey's bar. Okay, all of a sudden I have the biggest craving for chocolate and I have to have that Hershey's bar. I mean, haven't we all done that? How many times have we done that? You know, probably more times than what we think. And then we forget about it and we're like, yeah, we eat healthy anyways. So is that a lack of willpower or is that decision fatigue? I would argue that that is decision fatigue and that a lot of times a lack of willpower can be at least partially due to decision fatigue. So we can talk about strategies for that in a minute, but I want to give you another very sobering um, report. I guess it's a report, a review. 
Over a thousand cases in an Israeli court were examined, and these were cases of prisoners coming up for parole, and they had to meet before a judge, have their case heard, and then the judge made a decision whether or not they would be eligible for parole. And in this study, these people had served two-thirds of their sentence. And so what the researchers did is they looked at the number of prisoners who were paroled, whose cases were heard at 8 a.m. Then they looked at those whose cases were heard right before lunch. And then they looked at a third group of people whose cases were heard late in the day. And I'll bet you can kind of guess right now what the results were. What they found out is that overwhelmingly the cases that were heard first thing in the morning were much more likely to be granted parole. Those cases that were heard right before lunch when the judge has been listening to cases all morning and those that were heard late in the day when the judge has been listening to cases all day and now it's like three or four hours since lunch, those two times parole or um, prisoners were much less likely, significantly less likely to be paroled early. So... It's, a, it's definitely a, an example there of decision fatigue. You want things done when decisions are, have not been made a lot already during the day. So I always joke that if I ever needed to have surgery, I always wanted to go first. Do not make me the last case in the day. I don't want my surgeon having to think like, oh my gosh, you know, did they do things right? Or maybe we should do it this way or that way. Oh no, I want the first case, right? <laughs> I'm not even having surgery, but it just came to mind. Anyway, so, all right, so what affects our decisions? It's our mental bandwidth. And what contributes to mental bandwidth? Well, two things. The number of decisions that we've already made and the amount of glucose we have available for energy. So we do need a certain level of blood glucose available to travel to our brain so that we can actually think clearly, right? Have you ever gotten to that point, maybe it is right before lunch, where your brain is a little foggy, you have that brain fog, and you're like, it's like that commercial with uh, Snickers, where Marsha Brady needs to go and have a Snickers bar, right? You know, we get to that point. So the thing is, we don't want to have a Snickers bar every day, because we know that that's not really in our best interest, right? Right? So we have to actually put some strategies into place. And I'm going to go a little bit down a little nutrition um, tangent here or just off this on a little branch here for a minute and just think about, you know, how can we try to avoid this where we want to have, we don't want to have to make too many decisions about what to eat when we are low on energy, but we know that we need to eat something, all right? And we don't want to have to make too many trade-offs. So... The best thing to do is plan ahead a little bit. Plan ahead to have a snack. You know, I'm big on snacking, not all day long, but definitely between that lunch hour and dinner hour, which sometimes can be a very big span of time. Um, and maybe for some people it isn't, but if you're at the point where you have to make important decisions and you need to bridge the gap, you know, for your brain, and dinner's still three hours away, then it, it's definitely okay and not even okay, advisable to have a snack. And what do you want that snack to have in it? You want some quick energy, but you also want it to last. So you want some fiber. You want a snack with carbohydrates in it. Don't fear the carbohydrates, people. So you do want a snack with some carbohydrates in it and also some protein. So it could be something like, you know, you can think of all sorts of things. I don't want to tell you what to eat, but you can certainly do a search and think of it you know, one of my favorite things would be to have maybe, I don't know, um, some Greek yogurt and a piece of fruit, you know, like an apple, a nice high fiber fruit or a pear, something like that. But not always. That just came to mind quickly. But you just have to remember that there is definitely a catch-22 here. So you get to that point in time where you've already made a lot of decisions in the day, but yet you still have important decisions to make you know, you need glucose, but you really don't want to rely on the quick sugar fix, right? Because what's going to happen is you will get that big spike in blood sugar and you'll have, you know, that high energy for a very short time, but then it gets used up quickly and you end up 
dipping down to have lower energy reserves than what you actually had before that snack. But if you have that snack planned out, so make that part of one of your non-negotiables. You know, what are your snacks going to be? Maybe you plan them a week at a time. Maybe you have a choice of just two or three snacks that you have ready in your fridge or pantry or that you bring to work to have in your desk or your work refrigerator, and they're just ready to go. So just plan ahead a little bit. You know, maybe you want to think about um, having your snacks ready. Maybe you want to think about um, having some other meals ready, and maybe you want to think about what you're wearing, you know, and then I would ask you, pause for a minute, And think about what other decisions can you automate in your day and in your week. I know someone who has her dinner menus planned out and Saturday night is always steak night. They don't think about it. It's steak night whether they're in or out. You know, they have fish two meals a week and she has, you know, one evening, I forget what day of the week is, is fish and one lunch meal is fish. And that's a non-negotiable. You know, she has only two lunch breakfast options. I personally only have two breakfast options, and I usually have them planned out for the week. So this is my oatmeal week. I know for the next four days, I'm recording this on a Tuesday. Um, I know, well, today and through Friday, I know I'm having oatmeal, and I even have it partially pre-prepped. But, you know, other weeks, I'm way more into the smoothies. You know, same thing with the lunches. I've got them, you know, I do tend to like to talk about food a lot. It's something, you know, that I work with people professionally on, and if you'd like to know more about that, you can actually in the actually in the show notes take a look at the link for Mission Nutrition, which is my nutrition membership. So those are just some things, but I want you to not feel bad if you have a period in time where you feel like your willpower is letting you down. It may not just be your willpower, it may actually be, you know, the result of decision fatigue and also in combination with low blood sugar. So take that for what it's worth, and I hope you really enjoyed this episode because I really enjoyed talking about this with you, and it's very special to be able to bring you topics and guests that can help with day-to-day living, that can help with personal development, um, how you see the world, and how you help others. So do me a favor, subscribe to this podcast Tell your friends about it, take a screenshot, and share it with your friends on social media if you had all found this helpful. So just a reminder that new episodes come out every single Tuesday, and then we also have our occasional episodes that are a little bit briefer that we call In a Nutshell, and those will come out on occasional Fridays.